so this is the front part and i cut out my lining to be equal but the length is not equal it should be about two inches shorter so i cut out my lining to be equal with the front part and i'm also going to do the same thing at the back i'm going to be sewing on top i would sew this side i would sew the other side you guys will see the result of what i did so i double stitched it because this is going to form my gathers i double stitched it you guys saw what i did i double stitched it at this point the next thing i'm just going to do is to start drawing out my gathers with my thread so guys if you're watching this video and you have already subscribed to this channel thank you so much for subscribing and if you haven't subscribed to this channel please do like and subscribe to this channel make sure you like this video and tell me on the comment section if this video was helpful to you remember guys this gathers is not straight it has a curve and a v pattern right so for every curve you have to make sure that the it is equal with the black part i'm just saying the black part so as you remember that is the upper part so this curve at this point it has to be equal with the black part right if not you have to make it equal for this center point which is the curve point it also has to be equal with the center point of the black parts right so that is what you are just going to do you have to make sure they are all what equal the v curve has to be equal with the black part v curve this um curve points at the, for this ankara have to be equal with the black part curve points also so you can just be placing your back part your black part on top of it just to make sure that it is actually equal So I'm going to be repeating the same process at this other side. So this is what it's looking like. This is my V curve, this is my curve, and this is also my V point also. So this is what it is looking like, guys. The V point, the curve point, and the other V point also. You saw what I did over here. And I made sure that it is equal with the black part. So this is one part of my back area. I connected it through the zipper allowance with my lining. So I just joined it with my lining at the zipper allowance area. And then I'm just going to turn it over to the um, right part. That's the front part. So I ironed this part out. You guys saw what I did. I ironed it out. So the next thing I'm going to do for this upper part to connect it with the lining is I'm going to double stitch it twice. So that I will draw my gathers just as I did for the front part so this is what is looking like after i double stitches this process i did is also the same process i'm going to be doing at the other parts of the back remember it's two back it's two um, back parts we have so i repeated the same process i did at the other back part and i'm going to be joining it together that's the two parts with the zipper allowance area so i'm going to join it at this point this is my zipper allowance area i will join it with my um sewing machine so this is the first part of the front part remember we named it that first part so for this bottom part i'm just going to go ahead to use my machine to run it once at this point because i want to just give it a little gathers at the bottom part so this is what it's looking like i'm so sorry you cannot see the thread because this is a black material i don't honestly like using black materials to film but because a client requested this look and i saw it was trending I just decided to film how I made this look. So I just started drawing. I'm not really drawing it that much. And that was why, guys, I did not slash it. There was no reason I needed to slash it. Because I don't want it to be too gathered. If I wanted it to be too gathered, I would have slashed it, right? So I just did this a little bit. If you want it to be gathered very well, you have to slash it, guys. You have to slash it using your pattern paper. So this is what it's looking like after doing it, right? So... The next thing I'm just going to do is to connect the second part, that's the bottom part, together with this upper part. I connected the bottom part with the upper part. So this is what it's looking like, guys. I'm just going to turn it over. So I got my middle point for the upper part and for the lower part, I got my middle point also. And then I'm going to be connecting it just as you guys can see what I'm doing. I would connect it. So this is what it's looking like after connecting it, right? Then I'm going to also connect the other parts together. So this is it. I just opened it up. Remember, this other part is not connected. So I'm going to also turn it over to the other side and connect it together.
so just as i did for this other part i am also going to connect it using my sewing machine i would connect it together as i did for the other part so after connecting it this is what is looking like guys after connecting it this is what it's looking like. You guys can see the rushed area. That's the gathered part that I was speaking about, right? So for the lining part, I repeated the same process I did at those parts. I repeated it on the lining part. So I'm just going to turn the lining to the wrong side where my stitches are showing. And then I'm going to be connecting it through the neckline. I'll be connecting my neckline area in this V pattern. I will sew on top of it my neckline area. And then I'm going to also go ahead to sew this my curved areas. All these curved areas, I'm going to go ahead to sew all over there. You guys see? So for this back part also, I'm going to be connecting my neckline all the way to my zipper allowance area. I connected. You guys can see what I'm using my chalk to do. So from those points also, I'm going to be connecting the bottom parts together, guys. I would connect it. So this area that I'm marking with my chalk are the areas that I'm going to be what sewing over. I will repeat the same process at the other side of the back. Of so this is what is looking like after sewing it. I know you cannot see the stitches because it is black. I'm just going to go ahead to turn it over and then I'm just going to um, iron it. I will turn it over. I'm just turning it over now so that you guys can see what I did. And then I will iron this part. I would iron it. So this is what it's looking like, guys. This is what it's looking like. So for this part, this part, I'm going to be sewing this part, guys, so that it will be stable. So after sewing it, see, I've already ironed it. I ironed all these parts out. I'm going to be placing my other back part on top of each other. So I placed my back part, which was already ironed. How I got it was I repeated the same process I did, just as I showed you guys. And then I'm going to be connecting it with each, this area that I'm marking with my chalk is the area that I'm going to be sewing all over. After joining it through the neckline and the bottom part, this is what my front piece is looking like. I would sew the side also just to make sure it is stable then. I'm going to place my back part on top of my front piece. I place it on top then. I opened up one um, side of my lining. Using one side of the lining, I'm going to use it to cover the other side. I turned one side of my lining. I turned it over and use it to cover the other part and then i'm just going to go ahead to sew over this area i will repeat the same process at the, this other shoulder part i repeated this this other shoulder part so this is what it's looking like guys after sewing it i already sewed the shoulder point and i turned it over so guys can you see how neat is looking even the back is also looking very very neat so for this um back part i opened up my zipper allowance a little bit and why am i opening it up i want to join this my gathers these gathers together with it right so i placed it from i joined it through the zipper allowance area both the gathered zipper allowance i placed it on top i just make sure that it is well arranged you just have to place it on top then i'm going to go ahead to sew over this area repeating the same process at this other side i would sew over these areas i'm just going to make sure that it is well placed so when you are placing it make sure that it is very well placed so after um doing it i opened it up i already connected it together as you guys can see i'm just going to go ahead to sew all over it together that's the zip allowance area so for this front part also i made sure that i placed it very well and very neat i'm just going to make sure that i place it very well and it's going to be very neat as much as possible so when you are doing your own make sure that it is well placed and i would sew on top of it guys i would sew on top of it so this is what the front part is looking like after um connecting it I already connected it. This is what the front part is looking like. So what I'm just doing now is to be imputing my body measurement together. I marked my waist length which was 14 inches. I marked 14 inches at this other side also. And then the next thing I'm going to do is to impute my own body, my bust circumference, my bust circumference. So what is telling me my middle point is just the zip allowance area. So using your zip allowance area for your body measurement, it tells you the middle point. So, so that one side is not going to be bigger than the other side. So I went on to mark my waist measurements, my waist circumference. I also marked my waist circumference at this point also. The same thing you do at this point is the same thing you do at the other point. 
so the next thing I did was to connect the lines together my bust and my waist um, line together so after doing that I marked out my hip length which was 22 inches you guys can see the chalk at that point right so it's not as if the hip length is going to come all the way down but after marking it out I walked back out my hip circumference and then this is where the chalk is going to stop it's not going to go below that gathered part so that is where my chalk stopped guys that is where my chalk stopped so after this is not going to you're not going to give it like an a shape pattern a an a line curve right so I gave it an a line curve you guys saw what I did I gave it an a-line curve so that was where it stopped so for this hand I had two of it for to represent my sleeve I marked out my sleeve pattern using my chalk so this is a pencil and this I was not really recreating the hand that I saw on Instagram I the um, client wanted a different hand so this hand is a little bit longer than this ha the hand that I um, posted on my thumbnail so I marked out my sleeve band and my upper sleeve band measurements and I connected it together after connecting it I just added in my allowance so I then went ahead to cut all this out to get my center point I'm I'm going to notch that point I'm going to notch this area just so that I will get my um, center point just a little bit of a notch at that point so then I already have my lining that I cut exactly the same measurement I have my lining so this is what I'm just going to be using I want a little bit of the Ankara to be at the hand so this is just about two inches I'm going to be sewing over this area guys I'm going to be joining it sewing over this area this bottom area and this is what is looking like after I sewed that area guys so I'm going to place my lining on top of it I place my lining on top of it and I'm going to be sewing the bottom parts so I would sew this bottom part also guys so after sewing it this is what it's looking like I turned it over and then I'm just going to be sewing all over here that my hand is motioning I would sew over those areas so look at what it's looking like guys I went ahead to iron it this is what it is looking like and I have two of it repeating the same processes then I'm going to be connecting it with my dress I would connect it together with my dress I already went ahead to impute my zip this is what it's looking like I used a rainbow zip for this dress so this is what it's looking like and this is the hand after joining it guys this is the hand after I have joined it so this is the stone I'm using instead of a bead I'm using a stone and this gold stone is called a shwaris. and the reason I'm using a stone instead of a bead was just because of the client was going to collect this dress today and using a bead would waste my time so I already finished um, stoning one part of it I'm not done stoning right I just wanted to show you guys I got someone to wear it for me and this is what it's looking like guys so I already um, stoned the upper part and the hand I tell you guys this camera is not giving justice to this look but I hope to get a new camera soon but this is looking like this is way better in reality I stoned the hand and I also stoned the upper part of this dress so this is what it's looking like guys after stoning them